Hey guys, uh, welcome and thank you for joining today. Um, so we're here in my South London studio today and I think we've got people joining from all over the world which is really, really exciting. Um, so a little bit about me and who I'm, I am. Um, so I'm Marcus, uh, I'm gestural painter. Um, my studio is in London and that's kind of where all of my work is based. The style you can probably see behind me um, is there and it, it changes from time to time. Um, so today I'm going to give you a really kind of broad overlook on my practice and the way I do things. So yeah, hope you enjoy it. So without further ado, we're going to get going. Um, so first things first, studies book. If everybody can grab that. Um, and what we're going to do is we're just going to rip off some of the pages like that. Let's just take off, we'll take off one for now, that's fine. So there's a few different things we can do to kind of warm up and I always suggest this before approaching the kind of big bad canvas, right? Um, because the canvas can be quite scary. On paper, you're allowed to make mistakes, that's what it's for and I think it's always really good just for me as well, before I attack a big painting, I'll just kind of do a few quick sketches uh, and try a few different things out before I move on to the actual thing, which is exactly what we're going to do today. So. Without further ado, we're going to start with the smallest brush, uh, which is number 10. Um, so we're going to get a bit of water on that, wet it, open up my paints first. And I think there's three different kits that Sculpt do. Um, so today I'm using the pastel kit. Um, so I think there's a couple of others, all kind of work in a very similar way. Though you'll have your kind of light colors going to dark colors, which is very much the way we're gonna try and work to get today, which is kind of ultimately starting light, going to dark, and then kind of coming, bringing back some light in. So it's got that contrast throughout. Um, so we've got our mixing palette here. And today, white paint is gonna be your best friend. Um, so for the tests, let's get some of the darkest color. So for me, it's this blue, but you can use anything to be honest. These tests are very much a case of just getting your hand used to what it feels like with paint. So we've wet our brush, kind of just if you've got something you can rub it on just to kind of, it can't even be on your skin, just to kind of dry off any loose water there. Um, and what we want to do, I don't know if you can see that, we're going to get a bit of the paint, the dark paint, whatever colour you've chosen. It might not be blue, it might be orange or green. Um, I can't remember what other colours are in the other kits. Um, and we're just going to make some marks. So whatever dominant hand you are, I'm right-handed, we're just going to go for a mark, it doesn't matter what it is, holding it almost like you would to write, okay? Simple. I'm going to try that again. Your shapes don't need to be the same as mine, they can be anything you want. It's purely just to get you used to how the paint is feeling on the different texture and how you are. It's different if you've not painted it before, it's quite different to, for instance, drawing on a, on a paint, paint, sorry, with a pencil or a pen. Okay, cool. So yeah, that's given you a good idea of kind of like the different feelings and the different textures of, of how things work. So hopefully that's, we're gonna take another piece of paper now that there we go okay i think that's in shot um and now we're just going to introduce a little bit of the white same brush doesn't really matter don't worry about getting things messy so what you're going to see now is a nice gradient start to happen we can take a bit more of the blue as well we're seeing what that does this is again, this is very much just getting used to how the paint feels. So changing from dark 
to light and seeing those different brush strokes, how they come out. Nice, okay. So we're gonna try another color now. I'm gonna go for the kind of peachy orange here. Chuck that in there. What I would suggest as well is keep each of your colors separate in the separate boxes. It's just gonna make your life a bit easier when we come onto the canvas because you want to reuse this tray for the canvas. Um, so let's take a new brush. Again, just give a little dab in the water, loosen up the bristles. That's it. Um, touch of white. Touch of the orange. And we're gonna just drag it down. Nice big broad brush strokes. I've seen a question come in, what inspires me? Big question. Um, I guess, you know, we're all like sponges, end of the day, we all kind of absorb everything that is around us. Um, so yeah, everything and anything, which is quite a, probably an annoying answer. Um, but it's true, kind of, of course, the main things like going to art galleries and stuff like that, I would highly recommend because they're really inspirational places to see what the big name blue chip artists are doing and how they do it. I would also suggest going right up close to the paintings when you're there and taking the opportunity to really see what the details are and figure out how might that artist have done it. So yeah, there's so many things that do inspire me. Um, so yeah, right, let's get back to it. Um, how much paint should I put on my brush? Really up to you. I'm, at the moment, I'm kind of doing it fairly thick. Um, you can go really thin though, you know, you can see there I've done it thick, but if you want to kind of, it's a bit dry now, you can just kind of, those, and I equally like those really, it's kind of hard to see with this colour and this, this there, but really kind of light and sort of airy feels, or if you want to go nice and thickly on like that. It's all about just getting a feel for how these things come out. Um, cool, so we can, we're gonna just chuck that in the water. So what, once we've done these tests, we're gonna have a mini kind of break and we're gonna wash our brushes to start the canvas. Um, so we're gonna move that sketch to the side. We're gonna take another piece. We're gonna try the palette knife now. So palette knife is really good if you wanna kind of apply paint thickly. So let's just try um, let's just try some of the paint. So we're going to get a bit of this white paint and we're going to chuck it straight onto the canvas. Onto the canvas, not the canvas, onto the paper. Then we're going to get a darker colour and we're going to go on top of that again. Drag it across. It makes this really nice kind of iridescent look and it keeps that really thick feel, which is really, really a nice texture to add when you're going a bit thinner on different parts of the canvas. So with a palette knife, you can just, if you're wearing an apron, rub it off, or you can just wipe it off on the side. And it's very clean again, which is really good. Um, so have a go at doing other, there's the droplets as well, where you can just simply, you've got a bit on the end there, and you're going to be dragging that down. Try that again, that didn't come out that well. So nice drop, dragging it down. And give, it, give yourself a few goes of those. And you can try the same ones again. Mix up different colours. You'll be dragging it down. Making these kind of mini paintings almost. Yeah? You can always introduce more colour. The good thing about canvas and paper is it absorbs quite a lot of paint easily, which allows you to build layers nicely. Whereas if you were painting on something like wood, it's a lot smoother surface and it won't absorb things quite as easily. 
Okay, so we're going to chuck that to the side. And so one of the last other exercises we're going to try is the sponge. I don't use the sponge that much in my work, um, but it is a really useful tool depending on the type of painting and the look and feel you want to you want to do. So I can show you a couple of things you want to do that. So first of all, just give it a little tiny dip in your water. If your water's already getting a bit mucky, you can just chuck it down the sink and refresh it. So let's get some pink on the go. Squeeze that in the corner there. I always think put it in the corner just because it gives you room to mix into the palette at a later stage if you want to do that. So again, let's get a bit white on there first. Nice, a little bit pink. So the one method is you can kind of get it on, that's very thick, get it on and you can kind of dab it around. You get these really kind of like faded looks like that. So a lot of landscape painters use this for kind of the images of the sky and clouds and things like that. If I were to use this for abstract painting, I might, so if we go again, just reload that with some bit of paint. You can use it for like these really smooth drags. So you're just putting it on and you're dragging it across like that, which gives this kind of really smooth velvety look, which you don't necessarily achieve with a paintbrush. Um, so yeah, that it really, again, it really depends on what you want to get from it. So you can just wash that off. And I think with, the, with painting, especially abstract painting, is my, a big piece of advice that I always give myself is don't be precious. Just, if you spill bits, you know, kind of water drops on, it's absolutely fine. I think sometimes little mistakes are always the best, sometimes the best bits. Um, and yeah, it's, it's kind of like all part of the fun. Um, so let's have a go. We're going to do one more sketch, which is kind of going to be our mini painting now. So we're going to bring everything we've just tried into one and we're going to make a mini piece that's kind of going to become a test to almost what we're going to be doing on the big canvas. So as I said at the start, we're going to start from light and we're going to go dark. Um, so someone asked in the question, so the video is going to be on YouTube and it'll be on the Sculpt website as well. Um, so with our other, we've got two remaining brushes that we haven't used yet. So these ones, we're going to use the slightly smaller one, not the biggest one. But if you want to use the other ones, absolutely fine. Really, it's really up to you. So let's get a bit more white. What I like to do before I start painting is just with white, nothing else, white onto the white paper. Sounds a bit silly, I know, but it will make sense. Is just to kind of bring it over. And what I'm doing is I'm kind of wetting the surface like that. And this is gonna allow, when I put the paint, other paints over it, to kind of merge in nicely and not just be a really thick, bold, dark color. Okay, so we've got our white base. You probably can't see it there, maybe just about. Um, so then we're gonna use one of the light shades. I'm gonna go for the peachy, purpley kind of, purpley, not peachy, the uh, pinky kind of peach color. We're just gonna go up here, Ch choose, choose a corner. Doesn't matter, it can be there, 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 there. We're going to give it a couple of those brush strokes. One or two, doesn't matter. Something like that. Really nice and light. And maybe let's go for another one like that. Lovely. That's it. That's it for that colour. So you can put that brush down. Let's introduce another colour. So our final colour in our final corner, which is this really nice 
minty blue and green kind of colour. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to wash off quickly in my water the one I just had with the peach colour. Like I said, don't worry about being too precious about it. If it's got some excess paint on from the previous colour, it's all part of it. It doesn't really matter. So let's get a bit of that green. Don't worry about adding white onto this one. We want to leave it kind of bold. So let's go over that and see what that kind of does when you're cutting through the other colours. Yeah? And we're going to do another one here. Nice. Okay. So let's chuck that back in. And let's go for the big one. Big brush. We're going to go for a darker colour now. I need to get, just refill mine up. So this time I am going to add a bit of white white on one side and then flip the brush around on the other side take your blue and hopefully what we're going to see is a nice bit of a gradient here so this is kind of like the big the big statement brush mark you might like to think so you can be any kind of movement you want and some people like to hold the brush further out kind of like that for me i'm holding it kind of further down that's just the way i paint Try these different ways of doing it when we move onto the canvas. You've got a bit more time then to experiment. So we're going to be starting there. All right. Nice big brush stroke. And we can kind of retouch into that if you like. Like that. So what I like to do, again, this is very personal as to my own style and what I do is once I've got that dark kind of colour sitting on top, I like to bring back up some light. So this can be the kind of more experimental phase where you can use credit cards, keys, anything you like really. So for this, we're going to be using the back end of your, your brush. And we're just going to be marking back into it. Something simple like that. So there we go. That's your kind of mini painting before you want to move on to canvas. So hopefully all of this has given you a good kind of introduction and given you the opportunity to have a go at the different kind of brush marks that you're going to be using and just made you kind of take away a bit of that fear of a big white canvas, which for me, even to this day, is still kind of like, oh, a bit daunting before you begin. Um, so yeah, before we move on to the canvas, um, firstly, is there any questions about the stuff that we've just run through or anything, questions you'd like to ask me? Um, and secondly, if you don't have any questions, now's a good time to just run off, chuck that dirty water uh, down a drain or doing the sink um, and just kind of wash those brushes up a little bit. Um, so yeah, if you want to do that now or if you've got questions, throw them into the chat and I'll answer them. How much time do I usually spend on a painting? That's actually a question I get asked a lot. Um, it really, it really depends is the answer to that. Um, sometimes I'll be having a great day and I'll just start working on a painting and it'll come together in sort of like a couple of hours, um, depending on layers. Some, sometimes I keep it very wet and it's just quick. Um, other times I'll start working on something and I'll have to think about it. I'll need to go away and think about it, let, let layers dry. Um, and sometimes I have painting sat in my studio for five months and I'm kind of constantly coming back, doing little bits on it here and there. Um, so yeah, it really, really depends. Um, it's one of those things though, for me, a lot of artists don't necessarily always find it easy to know when to finish, which is probably a, something, a question that's gonna crop up for all of you with the canvas towards the end of it. Um, when is it finished? When is it done? Um, which is difficult. Um, 
which is difficult to know. So it's kind of you just I think you will know and I will kind of have a good idea of it once once you've kind of got near to the end stages whether to leave it or not or to just add a few more details. Um, but that is all part of the experience and, and the fun of kind of deciding yes I'm going to leave it there or you know what I want to keep going. Um, so something we're not going to do today is be using the time to kind of give some layers to dry. We're going to be working very much wet and keeping that canvas going. Um, but of course use today if you want to kind of pause your painting and let it dry, use a hairdryer if you want to speed things up, then you can re-approach that and go again um, and add on to it. Okay, I'm just going to fill up my water with some clean water. Okay, got some water, so I'm going to just clear my space. So your brushes are probably going to be a little bit painty. That's all fine. Like I said, don't be precious about it. Okay, so here we go. Canvas, hopefully you've all got this made or something which you can use. You can use paint, a paper again, if you're not quite ready and you want to just a little bit more time to think about things. So I don't know if you can see, but I've got all of my kind of, my sketches that I started just to my side. I always think keep them handy, keep them in viewpoint because it will give you reminders of the different brush marks and strokes and things like that that you have already done and you know you can do and it will give you an opportunity to then bring it to this canvas. So if everyone can now just load up with a bit more paint if you, if you only put a little bit into your palette trays I'd say put more white on than you think adding these up and we're going to be moving fairly quick with this when we get going um, don't worry if you miss things we can always watch it back and you can always ask me questions love those pieces in the background thank you very much appreciate it okay cool right We've got some fresh water, we've got our palettes loaded up and we've got a big white canvas staring us in the face. Okay, so for me, I always like to kind of take the pressure off starting a canvas because it's kind of something that is physical and you might, you might be hanging this in your home, you might be giving it to friends or family um, who knows, right? It's something you, you, you've created, it's, it's purely from your heart. So for me, I always like to just make a mark on the canvas. It doesn't matter how big, how small, it can be with anything. Today I'm, I've just got a pencil, so if you don't have a pencil to hand, um, you, could, you could even just use a bit of the kind of slightly damp paintbrush you've got there, or even a pen, anything. And what I'm going to do, you, like I said, it can just be that little tiny mark, that's it. Or we can kind of, you know, do something like that. And don't worry, we're probably going to paint over those things. But there's two things about this. One, I like that those initial marks might be coming through. Um, and two, it just, it kind of gives you that opportunity to say, okay, cool, I've already started. So everything from here is great, we're gonna just go for it, okay? So I'm probably not gonna be using the small brush just yet with this. Um, so we're gonna be using one of the, the second biggest one, which is this. And again, if you wanna go use a different one, if you wanna go big straight in, go for it. It doesn't really matter. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna be chucking a bit of water fairly messily onto the canvas 
and we're going to get a bit of that white paint now like that and this is again like we did with the first the the last paper test we're kind of just wetting the canvas and we're getting different the whole thing doesn't need to be wet i actually quite like it when parts of it are dry because then without you knowing it's kind of going to be creating different brush strokes and i think that unknown is sometimes the most exciting parts of the painting so you know fairly randomly but like a, a fairly nice even spread with that white so yeah even even already i've kind of I've used up a lot of my white. So I'm just gonna chuck a bit more in there, like so, great. So, like I said at the beginning, what we're gonna be doing is kind of going, imagining, right, so if this is our color, we're gonna be going from light, dark, back to light. That's kind of the journey of what we're gonna be doing today. Today, tonight. Depends where you are in the world, actually. Um, so let's start with some of that. Okay, cool. So we've got that white. So same same brush we use the white for. We're gonna get some of this peachy color here. And let's go, choose an area. Be big with it, be bold. Get a good feel with it. Don't worry too much about what you're doing now because some of this will be covered over. This is also a really nice opportunity to just get a feel of how the paint is moving and different colors and, and the shades. So you can, the thicker obviously is gonna be bolder and darker, but when you're going into that white, it's gonna get brighter. Yeah. You can choose another area, you can look just a tiny bit up there. Really depends. Okay, cool. So I'm just gonna use the same brush again, actually. Just dip that in my water, give it a little rinse off. Touch more white. So we're gonna go for some of the, this like pinky, purpley color next. And this is kind of what my brain is doing right now is kind of just thinking about the composition of it. So we've got this big area here, which is already a color and we've got something smaller up here. So I'm just thinking about where else can I do that? So yeah, as I was saying, we're kind of thinking about composition now. So we've got this bigger area, we've got a small area. We've loaded up the brush. Um, Liam, if you could pull that up so I can have a look and see what the viewpoint is. Just want to make sure people can see what I'm seeing. Um, and we've got this brush, bit of pink, bit of white. So we're going to kind of think about how, where that might be placed. So for me, I'm just going to go here. Like that. There's no right or wrong way. Can do the same sort of thing again. This time I'm gonna do a kind of a slightly different mark. So we're gonna be kind of more loosely sort of dragging it around. Making those kind of different shapes, I always think it's really nice. You get those kind of like thicker marks there. And you've got this excess if you want. I always like this kind of drag method where you're kind of almost like leaning against the canvas and then you're kind of putting it over, just like that, okay? Okay, so next up, we're gonna have a look at, what color should we go for? Let's go for this, this minty green. I love this color. I use this color a lot in my paintings, actually. And I think this palette was kind of based a bit on my work when I was speaking with Sculpt about setting all of this up and, and the colors that I use. Um, so yeah, it's great to have it because I love using it. 
So again, I think at this stage, sometimes I kind of, you know, don't be precious about it. You can flick water on it. It's kind of about thinking about it, but not thinking about it too much and just enjoying the experience, having fun with it. So again, we're thinking kind of like, where's this going to be going next? So I'm thinking up here might be quite a nice area for it. And use your arm, use that kind of that breadth and those big movements. Thinking back to the studies, it can be big, it can be small. You can kind of just add little, little details of it, little pockets there, you know, like that. And remember, white is your friend with this. It's going to be your gradient to kind of go lighter and darker in various different places. So there's really, really light. It's mostly white. So what we can do is we can introduce some of that green back into it. Nice bold marks there. Okay. So we're moving fairly quickly through this. Again, this is a really quick example. Um, and sometimes you can go quick like this or you can go slower. You can take things time to dry. If you want a bigger, bolder brush mark, that will give you the time to do it. Um, okay, so we're going to move on to the dark color. So on our graph of kind of where we are, we're like at this stage right now. We're at the tipping, we're at the, the peak. We're going to just fill up our white again. I told you we'd be using a lot of white, and we are. And we're going to be going for the, the last kind of bold color here, which is kind of like... For me, the scary point, because this is what's going to be standing out the most on your canvas. Um, what I'm doing, you might have been seeing, I'm kind of a lot of the time I'm kind of going like this with my hands. What I'm doing is I'm blocking out certain areas. So if you do this, you step back from your painting and you kind of close one eye, you can get a bit of an idea of if I put a brush mark there, how is that going to look before you do it? Another really good trick that I use on a daily basis is I will get my phone and I will take a picture of it, of the camp piece as it is. And if you've got an iPhone, you can kind of just edit it like you would be editing any photo and you can draw those marks on just to kind of give you an idea of if you are feeling a bit nervous about before you might go what those colors and where the placement, what those what it might look like, basically. Um, okay, so, again, one side, bit of white, the back side, bit of blue. Let's go a lot of blue, actually. Let's go big. Okay, so we've got these kind of few areas here. So this is gonna be the darkest, of the brush brush marks. So let's go for it. So we've got that really gestural movement there. And this is very much, you're kind of thinking about it, but not too much. I think for me, that's why my work is the way it is, because it is very intuitive. There's no kind of logical sense to it. You really want to kind of keep it as free and gestural as possible. So again, I'm just going to load up. I feel like this bit could do with a bit more. So I'm going to kind of reintroduce going back up. Very small. So I think it's feeling a little unbalanced. Let's, let's kind of add a little bit more over here. We're going to kind of go a little bit lighter on this, maybe not so dark. Let's let that be the main kind of dominance there. And I think because that one's going up, maybe we go this way. Something like that, really simple. And what we're getting, and you can see now, is you're getting all of these different layers starting to build up nicely on top of each other. And as I said before, if you want these layers to be more impactful and stronger, you can dry them with a hairdryer when you have time, or if you don't have a hairdryer, just let it dry and you can come back to it again. There's always different approaches in different ways. The way we're doing today is very much a 
quick kind of wet approach to the painting. So again, same brush, I'm gonna just touch up with a bit of white there and I'm gonna kind of come back in through there. Okay. So I'm thinking up here as well, but this time I'm not gonna be doing that really strong. I'm gonna be kind of dragging it, that little kind of drag method. So almost like we've dropped the paintbrush there. We're gonna be kind of bringing it down. It's a really small little detail, but I quite like it because you're kind of seeing exact measurement of the brush and then you take lifting it up, taking it away, creating these things. And also it gives you this, I'll try over here so you can see as well. Kind of, it sees, makes you see the edge of the canvas, which sometimes can be a great thing. You might not want that. And other times, yeah, it depends. It really, it really depends on how you wanna, you wanna kind of view your work. If you wanna want the edges to be seen, are you gonna frame it? Are you gonna leave it raw edged? So whilst I on, on that point, I always think a lot of people think, oh, it needs to be really pristine. I personally think leave your edges. Let let the viewer see what's going on the edges. Let them see the drips. I think that's all part of the artistry, and I think it's a really nice thing to do. So. I think we're at kind of a nice place right now. We've got some nice shapes going on and nice textures. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna be introducing a little bit more detail now. So you can grab your palette knife at this stage. You can still use your brushes. It doesn't really matter, it's up to you. So again, guess what color we're gonna use? A white. Okay, so let's just go for some up here. So I don't know if you can see that. We're really thickly putting that on. So we've got a few different colors here. I think something we don't have there is, is a bit of orange. Always think you wanna be contrasting against what you've got there. And you can always mix straight onto the canvas as well. Don't be afraid to do that. Nice and thick. And I love those kind of details you get through there of the pink underneath and then the really thick orange paint flickers coming through. You can do that again. Different areas. And some artists use the technique of simply closing their eyes, which can be really helpful, especially if you're feeling a bit self-conscious about what you're doing. And again, you know, everything is a tool, hands included. Actually, what I think is better than a sponge and which is something I do use is my hands. So you can dip it in straight in and you can mix it on. And actually it kind of grips a really nice human element to your paintings where you're literally seeing some of the imprints of the artist's hand. You can't get more of a signature than that. So at this stage, we can as well, we can use the little brush to add in little details. So with this painting, I'm, I'm trying to kind of give you all of the different ideas and things that I would do. Um, there's no right or wrong way. This is just some of the things that you can do. So you can kind of color over colors. You can kind of test those, what happens when you go a bit off piste, holding it at length and sort of dragging it like so. Like I said at the beginning, this is all about having fun. If you're not having fun, then start again. Enjoy the experience. There'll be days if you do get into painting when you feel really frustrated, but that is all part of it. And that is what we kind of all do and experience as painters. So now I'm feeling this is a nice place. We could carry on, we could do lots of different things. We could let it dry and build up even more stronger layers. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is well, something we did right at the beginning is I'm just gonna get the back end of my paintbrush and we're gonna kind of 
remove some of the paint from the painting, which is going to bring that white back up through the different layers. So it's kind of reintroducing this curve. So on the kind of gradient, we're kind of around here now, we're coming up to the finish. So we can just kind of take one of those. And it's a really strong graphic. Sometimes you might not like this. You might think, actually, you know what, that's not for me. Or you might think, ah, that's kind of a cool idea. So yeah, really up to you. You can use a credit card as well if you want to go really thin or even like a ballpoint pen, something like that. So again, if we can move the camera up here, we can do something similar. We can just kind of these really straight basic lines, keeping it bold. And if you do have a pencil, you can always kind of add in little details. You know, they don't need to be specific, almost kind of childlike, which is a lot of the time what I'm doing in my work. But then if you want to do something which is a bit more structured, that's a possibility. There's always options. So I think we're going to leave it there because I'm aware that the time is running out. Um, but hopefully that has been a useful exercise for you guys to just understand of where you might start canvas, doing the different tests, how to do the different kind of movements and the gestures and the marks. Um, so yeah, and also if you haven't painted along today, um, that's absolutely fine, but do give it a go in your own time. Take your time or just go for it. My advice is go for it because I think the best way is to just throw yourself in the deep end and enjoy the experience and don't worry about necessarily what the end result looks like. Um, so before we finish up, is there any questions anybody has for me about the experience? Because I've been focusing on this canvas most of the time and I know we cut out for a bit. So if you've got any questions, chuck them in the chat now. Practice, practice, practice. Exactly that. It is that 100%. So much fun, yeah, that, yeah. thank you very much for joining as well. Um, so, whilst we have a few more questions coming in, before we finish, importantly, I wanna just announce that, so as part of today, all of your creations, we are gonna be running a competition um, that I'm gonna be helping judge along with the Sculpt team. Um, you've got until, when have you got until the Wednesday the 18th of January? to finish your paintings if you didn't finish them today. So you might want to let them dry, add a little bit on. But basically, all you need to do is tag them on Instagram. I think that's right, guys, yeah? So once you've done your painting, tag them on Instagram. Um, they'll make a record of that. And the winner will receive a bunch of great goodies from Sculpt. Um, so yeah, happy painting. I hope it's been really useful. So I'm going to just attack those questions now because I think there's been a few come in. Um, let's just scroll up. Okay, that was so much fun. Awesome. I'm glad you found it really useful. Um, do I ever use gesso instead of white? Yes, I do. Gesso is a really, really thick paint. I've got some in the studio here. Um, I think it's really good. So when I was mixing the white, if you're going to be going for those big, bold brush strokes, use gesso because it will go even more intense. So that's a really, really good thing to use. Good question. Um, and well, they're coming in quick, coming in quick. I can't keep up with them. Um, how do you stop when, decide when to stop painting? Very good question. It's a really hard one. I think you'll just know. That's a, probably a really annoying answer, but for me, I do, I just know. Um, or ask a friend. Um, and do you have tips for choosing a color palette? Um, yeah, I think just choose colors that you really enjoy. For me, Blues, greens, and pinks are in all of my paintings. I love those colors and I'll never bore of using them, I think. So yeah, I'd say choose three as a base and then you can build up on other layers from there. But I would start with three as a really simple way to start. Um, small pieces to practice off, lots to digest. Yeah, I, I'm aware there's probably lots to be digesting right now and thinking about, especially if these are first ever time painting. Um, so yeah, thank you for keeping up with it. How do you not overwork your painting? Good question. It's really hard. I do it all the time. Um, it's one of those things. If you do overwork your painting and you think, oh, this is a mess, 
don't worry about it. You can just let it dry, get some paint. Gesso is great for this. Over paint the whole thing and you can start again, start fresh. Don't worry about if you've messed the painting up. It happens to me daily. Um, it's every artist does it. Um, but what I would also say is if you do mess it up, maybe keep a corner of it and paint over it and just see if I leave that, how will the rest of the painting develop with that in the background? It might build up a really nice layer. Do you still sell all of the tools and paints you use? Yes, so the kit, which is here, oh, you can buy online. Um, so that's exactly what I've just used. Everything I've used is in the kit. Um, and actually, yeah, I helped them develop the kit, so it's really good, the quality is great. Um, so yeah, highly recommend it. Uh, love being part of the process. What kind of palette were I using? I was using the pastel palette from Sculpt. Do you start with a design of mine, mind or just free flow the design? Um, I free flow the design personally. I have a bit of an idea, but it's almost kind of like 10 seconds before I'm about to do it. So for this, I haven't planned this at all. Um, it's very much a, I was trying to think about how can I show everything that I've done today? Um, and I've just gone for it and this is the result. Um, love being part of your process, kind of palette, great, great, great. Um, seems expensive, blah, blah, blah. yeah, good question. Seems expensive to keep buying canvases. Any tips for how to paint more without using a canvas every time? Yeah, definitely. I would be using paper. Paper's really good. Like I've got hundreds of small pieces of paper that are almost mini paintings. Um, they started out as testers, but some of them I actually love and they've ended up being pieces that I've gone on to sell um, and yeah, been, been really good. So don't discard paper as just rubbish. Sometimes they're really use useful, great end pieces, but at the same time, use them as tests. Um, Sculpt's guy, do I, have, do I have my own link to buy? Uh, yes, there is. I'm sure someone will be able to chuck that into the chat. Um, do you try to express a mood or feelings with your paintings? Yes, always. Um, for me, my work is very much based on tempo and listening to music. So whenever I paint, I, today was a bit unusual, purely because of the setup, but I always have uh, music on in the background, which is basically, how my paintings are created based on the tempo and the music that I'm listening to. So I always hope that my viewer will be able to follow different brush strokes that I'm doing that I might be listening to something slow, classical music, or maybe something fast like punky kind of rock music. Um, it, I've listened to so many different things, it, it really varies. And actually a lot of the time, the pieces that I create are named after certain albums that have really influenced that work. Can I do more classes? Really enjoy this one. I'm really pleased to hear that. Um, we'll see, who knows? Let's let's see what the future holds. Um, very occasionally I do stuff in person, um, but yeah, this video will be also online. So if you do need to go back and watch it, cause I'm aware there was a few kind of teething issues and we went through some things quite quickly, especially the canvas. Cool tip about music, great. Okay. I'm. I hopefully I've answered most of those questions. If I haven't, um, you can get me on my Instagram. More than welcome to just drop me a message. If I don't respond in 24 hours, I will get back to you at some point. Um, but yeah, feel free to follow me. I try to kind of show as much as I can within my own practice. Um, but I'm always happy to answer any questions you might have about my work, how I've got to where I am or anything about this, my process. Um, so yeah. Happy painting, guys. Thank you very, very much for, for um, joining today. I'll just show you the end piece. I don't know how well you can see it on the other camera. It's probably gonna drip, so. Give you an idea of the kind of layers and structures that we've built together today. But yeah, thanks again for joining, guys. And yeah, have a good evening.